Good morning and welcome to Stiver's Homestead. I'm Zach and Jen is inside getting some of our bread ready for the day. Today though, I want to tell you four crucial essential items, maybe five, that you need in your garden to have a successful gardening year. Let's go ahead and get number one out of the way because he's gonna be talking a lot. A guard dog, seriously, a guard dog is very important to have in your garden if you can find a good one. So Rusty Dusty here, He's a very high anxiety, high energy dog. Um, he likes to bark at things, he likes to run around, and he likes to protect, most part. And he really does not like chickens getting close to his garden. So, Rusty is one of our dogs that does not like to dig. He is not a digger in any form or fashion, he's just a barker. So, as a nuisance as that might seem with the barking, it works out fantastic in your garden because he keeps out rabbits, squirrels, chickens, deers, all of those big fun things that want to come in there and munch on all your plants. So, this one's a little bit more difficult to have, but if you can, put a dog in it. Now, a dog will not make or break your gardening year. There's many other steps that you can take uh, without a dog to protect your garden from the larger pests that come around. One of those are fences. Our garden is completely fenced in all the way around. Now, we have a four foot high fence, which isn't ginormous, but it is lined with bob wire on top. It's the perimeter of fence that we have across our entire property to just help push anything back around our animals. That will help with most things. However, with deer, you might need to take an extra step. So deer themselves, they can jump really high, but they can't jump really wide. So if you do have your fence up and you don't want to put up an eight foot or six foot fence for, to protect deer out of there, you can put up your normal fence and then run one fake electrical wire all the way around it about three foot on the outside of that fence what that does is the deer are going to see that that fake electrical fence first and they're not going to be able to clear it i'm not saying it's never going to happen but you're going to definitely going to have much more success to turn them that way than just trying to have a four foot fence worth a shot right i've seen it work that wraps up number one now number two we're going to get into more of the smaller pests that we have hanging around our gardens aphids caterpillars beetles, June bugs, all those things that like to sit on there and just eat the fire out of your plants. So let's start with number one, DE, diametaceous earth. DE is an organic food grade powder that you can put on your plants, sprinkle it on just very little to protect from hard shelled bugs. So that's very important to remember, DE equals hard shelled bugs. So that's gonna be any kind of beetle, lady, well not ladybugs, but cucumber beetles that look very similar to ladybugs, they're just yellow. Ladybugs are our friends. We want them in the garden, along with spiders. So DE is gonna help protect your plants for those kind of things. If you're starting to see any, any evidence of hard-shelled bugs eating or being on your plants, sprinkle a little DE right on the plants and around in the dirt. That's gonna help keep them away. Number three, where are we at? Number three, soft-sided bugs, your caterpillars. Caterpillars are vicious in your garden. Also, tomato hornworms. They're a soft-sided caterpillar-like animal. This is where our tomatoes are this year. It's a brand new year. Hopefully, we have confused them enough to where they won't come, but I'm sure they'll come eventually. To protect from these guys, you wanna use BT. And you're seeing pictures pop up of what it looks like, and I'll have a link down below to where you can find all these products. BT is for your soft-sided bugs. So if you're starting to see caterpillar evidence or tomato hornworm evidence, you can spray that right on the leaves when you get top and bottom and make sure that you're getting it good and soaked and that'll help you with your soft sided bugs. One thing that I'm gonna talk about with all of these products is do it very early in the morning before the sun has risen or very late in the afternoon when the sun has set. Because if you have that on your plants, it could produce blight and uh, sunburn on your leaves themselves because it's just liquid, kind of oily, uh, and with that on there, it's like a magnifying glass for your plants and the sun. And you don't want to put that trauma to your plants because then you're just doing more hurt than good. So put this on morning or evening. Evening's my, my favorite time because then it can sit all overnight. And that's when most of your pests come out. Number four. This is for these tiny, tiny pests, the aphids of the world. The ones that you can barely even see, but they're just doing all kinds of trauma to your plants. And that is neem oil. Neem oil is best for any kind of aphid problem that you're having going on. Neem oil is also a liquid sprayer that you want to spray all over your plant. Top, bottom leaves, you really want to make sure that you get into that. Um, that's going to help with all of those little aphid problems. Again, morning or evening. Now, 
Now that you've protected your plants from all the pests that can be into your garden, how do you grow them really big plants? Well, that's number five. And number five is what we're gonna be doing together. And that is liquid fish fertilizer. Liquid fish is a beautiful, beautiful fertilizer and is honestly, in my opinion, the only thing you need to have an incredibly huge harvest and ginormous plants. It's organic and it is amazing. Liquid fish, three main components that it gives you is nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. These three items are so good for your soil and so amazing for your plants. It also has a lot of microorganisms that's in the liquid itself that help just continuously add nutrients back into your soil. This isn't only good for your garden gardening year, but it's also good for your soil in general. So the next year, those plants have not just taken all of the nutrients out of your soil. You keep adding that back in and it's gonna just continue to make that dirt better and better and better. So we have raised garden beds and we brought the soil in. So it's in pretty great shape, but every time you plant in them, you have to amend them. You have to add some nutrients back after the gardening year is over because your plants are taking it all. So liquid fish can help solve that problem for you. All right, so we just have your plain Jane standard two gallon jug that we have right here. You can get it any size you want to. It's just gonna change to technically the amount of uh, liquid fish and water that you're gonna put in. Two gallon, it's easy to carry. It's not real heavy once it's full. So that's the one that we stick with. But remember, you can get any size. Now real quick, before we start doing this, a little PSA announcement for you. This stinks and it stinks really bad. You can imagine, it's fish. You ever seen a really nasty pond with a bunch of dead fish in it? That's what this smells like. So prepare your nose. And another thing to remember, because sometimes this happens, it can draw in animals to your area because they like the smell of it. They might think it's something for them to eat. I've never had that issue. I know some have, but definitely make sure you're mixing this stuff outside, not in your house, and make sure you find you a little rusty or something or kind of hang out there while it sits and soaks in just so no stray animals decide to swing by and check out what's going on with all that fish. Two last things to remember with liquid fish. One, we do it weekly. You can do it every other week, once a month, however you wanna do it, but we do it about every Sunday. That's when we do our liquid fish. Secondly, I wouldn't put it on herbs, not because the roots are gonna pop up and give you fishy tasting herbs, but if you get that spray on the herbs that you're pulling off in the near future, it could taste a little fishy. But don't worry about it with your fruits and veggies. It ain't gonna have no different taste. That soil and those roots are absorbing all those nutrients. That's the last two. Okay, pour them out. I give this a good little shake. There is specific amounts. I'm not telling you that there isn't. They're gonna tell you how much to put in there. Pretty sure it's all on the back here. What I like to do is just eyeball it. It's kind of how we do everything around here. So I just kind of cover the bottom a little bit there. And we call it a day. So let me pull this up for you. As you can tell, that's about all we got. So it's about right there. The cool thing doing things organic it's organic matter. There's really not too much, but you don't want to over, over pump it because then you can produce a little bit too much into the plant and not so much into the fruit. You got to remember it's a healthy balance, but don't fear. You're not going to over fertilize it with liquid fish because it's organic. If you was using more of a chemical based and non-natural fertilizer, you best believe you can burn them up if you put too much in there and you stay organic. All right. And then once we do that, we're just going to fill it up with water to dilute it. This is Rusty's favorite part. He loves water, don't you? I'm saying that in a very sarcastic way because it's a, an extremely annoying job trying to water with Rusty because he likes to bite the water. You'll see here in just a second. All right, I always follow your line on your pump there because if you don't, you will overflow and nobody wants that. Once you pull, you wanna pump her up to build that pressure so we can get a good spray. Now for applying the fish fertilizer, all you do is you go to your base and you spray it and I usually count to five Mississippi. And that's it. That's it. That's how easy it is to apply fish fertilizer into your garden. Now that was one plant and we have about a 2,000, 3,000 square foot garden that we got going on here. So I've got to get busy. So this is where I leave you all. Remember the basics. Remember the few things that you need to do throughout the summer to have a great harvest. I promise you, if you use the ones that I just told you, it's gonna be fantastic. Let me know down, down in the comments some of your true and tried methods that you do to have a great harvest yourselves. I'm always learning and I always love it. You all 
If you're new here, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, we love you. And until the next one, bye.